Never let you go. It, 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 it's been good. Stunji is tier 1.5. Subscribe. Hey guys, it's Pokey here. Back with another video, and today we're gonna be taking a look at Brightwind's brand new version 1.1 tier list in watering waves and without further ado let's get into today's content all right watering waves tier list the toa tier is a tower of adversity similar to genshin pack blah 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 so it's okay yo is not the most mechanically demanding content watering waves with high difficulty holograms requiring much higher player skill levels such as if you're the rank one then it's different. um holograms that only offer re their rewards once punish specific character kits and are exclusively single target for these reasons we feel power of adversity is a better representation of an ongoing meta in modern waves skill ceiling modern waves offer many combat options some of which are not easily executed but boost certain characters powers substantially the switch cancel is an example of such technique where you allow the switch characters mid air to a new character while still executing the move so basically the negative edge or the kara cancel all right cool, cool, cool. not essential for everyone but you must assess them in the tier list will access their maximum potential and best teams, right? There's a lot of yapping. Best stream and team, maximum goal level, blah, blah, blah. Half of the 12 teams are good. Sequence zero, unless I've stated. Uh, increase four star sequence in the future. Assess have this, have S1 to all four star weapon. S5 for all two star. Three star, blah, 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 blah. And S1 on the standard five star. Okay, cool, cool. Criteria that impacts ratings for DPS. Rotation, difficulty, and potential for mistakes. Corrector damage within the best possible team. Characters on field flexibility and du durability. Durability. Can they easily dodge during the combo? Will they die in one hit? Okay, I'm keeping it but if a DPS dies in one hit, something is wrong. Uh, Corrector's ability to deal with damage with all damage types. Single target, cleave AoE, but with a bias towards single target being very more. Hybrid characters. Uh, mistakes, battle team. Oh, there's a lot of yeah. Support characters. All right, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go in, right? Change locks. All right, this is the main thing. As of the 22nd of july our team feels enough time has passed after the release of the game to raise all four stars on the baseline on the tier list to sequence two all four stars position on the tier list has been re-evaluated even if their ranking has not changed in some time we also add a toggle to switch between as you okay 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 so basically it's four star right so not too bad we also added a tier 1.5 chang li has been added to the tier list her review posts and cons that justify the ratings will be available on her profile soon jing shi proven herself to be far more powerful as we have learned from her her team convention how to use to overwhelm and invalidate many of the bosses in the game convincingly as some of if not the highest damage teams at sequence zero making her the top damage dealer for Tower of Adversity. For all these reasons, we are adjusting DPS cordon resulting in many characters moving down half a tier. I think this is completely valid. Absolutely destroying T Yen T0 to T0.5. Ooh, never let you go. It, 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 it's been a good run, guys. T Yen has good damage, grouping, and AoE, but lacks the defensive capabilities and raw output Jing Shi. All right, minor, minor spending mistake over here. And her teams can provide currently. After consulting with the community and extended attending, we feel it is appropriate to move Tian half a tier below. Jing Shi, another minor spending in the current state of the endgame. Havoc, Rover, and Encore. Tier 0 0.5 to tier 1. With Tian's move, we are then moving them respectively to maintain a status quo. All right. I'll check. Oh my god. Bloods did. Unlike Heaven Rover and Encore, we are moving Calcero down a full tier instead of only half a tier. Calcero has potential to deal top tier damage, contending with the likes of Jing, Jing Shi and Ji Yan's top teams in the hands of a swap cancel. You mean the swap back, swap back? Combo, bossing, no lag, gaming god. But most players do not fall within this category as Calcero is notoriously hard to play even at a reasonable level. We acknowledge Calcero can compete with the best, but he is held back by the severe difficulty required to actually use him to his full potential. Damn, da Dungeon is tier 1.5! In line with the changes of Heaven Rover and Encore, Tanjin is moving down half a tier to facilitate the reshuffling of the damage category. A relative placement outside of Jingxi remains unchanged. All right, Tianxing. Tier 0 and Tier 1. As players are reaching a point where they are confidently full clear TOA with close or maximum stars, Tianxing's value is starting to drop. Ooh. Never let you go. A bigger strength lies in grouping enemies, and the majority of the hardest fights players are struggling with have limited or no enemies for her to group. The stages she previously excelled to have, have become much easier due to players' account being higher. 
them over leveling most of the AoE content in the tower. I think this is pretty fair though. I, I think this is pretty fair. Uh, that being said, I wouldn't necessarily classify Qian Xing as like a DPS. Uh, she doesn't really feel like it. She, she feels more like a support. Her, 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 only, her, her only value is the Saki Saki, right? To be completely fair. But I, I, I can see this. I can see this. Let's take a look at the actual tier list itself. Ooh. Ang Li raking in at tier 0 0.5, standing shoulder to shoulder with Ji Yan as a main DPS. Okay. Okay. Encore and... I have a rover dropping down a tier to tier one. Calchero found dead in the ditch. Um, uh, one bob. I'm surprised this guy's not tier three. But okay, anyways, I, I digress. Uh, it's hybrid. Okay, Yingling, absolutely fair. Mortavi Sanhua, uh, Yuan Wu. Uh, this guy is found. Spectre rover is also found in tier two. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Sarah might have something to say about it. Verina, she is her right. She is absolutely. If there's gonna be a tier negative edge, if there's a tier negative ten. Uh, she's gonna be up there because she's quite literally best as of all every single team in the goddamn universe she's there right so if there's gonna be a negative edge she's gonna, she's gonna be one all right okay uh bai zhi jian xing okay yeah that's pretty fair so she's basically some support character okay 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 that's fine yang yang and ooh, our only tier three unit absolutely fair. all right so let's take a let's take a let's take a look see let's take a look see first of all keep in mind all of our four star resonators our four star units they are classified as as two sequence to her. So take that into consideration. From here to DPS, right? Support. Like I mentioned, uh, very nice her. And I, I I really sincerely feel she's gonna be here for a long, long, long ass time. Because in the event where Warding Waves were to release another support, you basically need three teams. You basically need three teams. So you might wanna, you know, really much she, she's just gonna be here for a long time or so nothing much to be said she's her okay cool uh bai zhi and Qian xing i think this is pretty fair because verena is just so good that she deserves to be one tier two tiers above the rest right so i think this is pretty fair i have not used bai zhi now but i will say when in the earlier days right the aoe saki saki before you could over level everything uh Qian xing saki saki was very very valuable right this this saki saki had a lot, a lot of utility so uh, I think this is fair. And when you over level and just one shot all the mobs, then the Saki Saki has a little bit less of a value. So I think that's a pretty fair downgrade. Yang Yang Tao Chi, I'm gonna keep it about. Never played them in my entire life. I have no comments. Any Yang Yang mains or Tao Chi mains, feel free to let me know what you guys think of them in the overall meta in Tao versus the Kamsa. So let me know. Uh I have heard that Yang Yang, she also has a Saki Saki. I'll beat is not as strong as Jian Xing Saki Saki. Uh but yeah, take that So that's gonna be that for support. I think it's, it's really not too much to be said because there's so little support, right? So that's all right. Hybrid units. Uh Ying Ling, I think D Fatal Tier Zero, not too much to discuss. Even to this day, she's just so good. She's good with Kalchero, she's good with um Jing she's good. She is her. Glad to get her. Hope you guys got her. Very, very good. Very versatile. I think not a lot of people can actually compete with what she can offer out here. So tier zero is pretty fair. More Teffy and Sanhua being in tier zero. All right, I'm going to keep it a buck. I found myself having slightly more comfort using more Teffy compared to Sanhua. One reason is just because I think the overall charge time with more Teffy, even though they both charge pretty fast, more Teffy being a ranged unit it makes me feel a little bit more comfort, right? And I think this tier has mentioned that comfort is going to be taken into value, right? Taking into consideration how comfortable a credit is. I feel like playing Motavi is very, very comfortable. For Sun Hua, she's melee, so you kind of need to be a little bit better in your dodging. And also, you kind of want to proc her, her ice pillars. You want to pop her ice pillars. A little bit higher of a, of a skill. Yeah, gun. Exactly. Gun. Gun changes everything. So a little bit higher of a skill. Right? So I, I, I'm glad to see the, the heart. Mm, heart is going to be included here. So that's going to be that. And overall, the... Outro skill for Sanghua is basic attack, right? It's basic attack damage demon. Currently, our best DPSs don't really benefit that much from. If you take a look at Jingxi, Qi Yan, aside from Encore, I'm talking about the best DPS. Aside from Encore, like our 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 big boys, our big boys and girls don't really benefit that much. But uh, yeah, just just in terms of relative value, I feel that Mortavi is slightly higher than, than Sanghua. But I think it is what it is. Yuan Wu. Okay, apparently this dude is ex. Exceedingly good with Jingxi. Exceedingly, exceedingly good with Jingxi. You pop a skill and you pop out. Done. Very fast, very quick. I have not played with him enough to, to kind of say my, my thoughts. But apparently, he's very, very, very good with Jingxi. So, for players that do not have Yingling, which is Jingxi's best slot, uh, Yuan Wu is a very, very decent alternative with the coordinate attacks. It helps you charge your stacks a lot quicker. So, there is that. But no comments, not enough play experience. Auto! Day in the ditch, done. Spectral Rover. I have seen some 
really crazy spectral rovers. Uh, shout out to my mod Sarah, which still does a, a decent chunk of damage on top of providing a little bit of support, especially as sequence for or especially as sequence for. So something to consider, something to consider. Maybe I will probably bump it up at least by half a tier. I feel that this should not be in the same tier as auto. At least half a tier. Now, I've seen some cra pretty crazy damage to Rover, but that is going to be from my observation. Let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments below. Right? Special Rover, I have not raised in her. I only invest in Havoc, so let's give that. So that is going to be the hybrid class. Okay, you know what? Let's just move on to the DPS class. Jingxi, pretty much the Akron of Watering Waves so far. I don't think people need to kind of debate this. All right. Absolutely ludicrous multipliers ludicrous damage up times ridiculous okay in the words of 1010 extremely high multipliers with extremely fast recharge time with extremely smooth rotations right very easy to play very high damage she is her right she's basically aircon so extremely 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 here's your worldview right so i don't think that there's much to be said uh bumping down ji yan to allow only one tier zero which is jingxi i think that is very very fair i don't think ji is anywhere close to what ji, uh jingxi has to offer and people that say ji, jingxi does not power creep ji yan uh they're basically on cool blade, right? so let's just move on to tier 0 0.5 now this is pretty interesting because Tang Li is in the category of a main dps rope and she is at tier 0 0.5 my guy for chang li is really up i'm not sure if my mods pinned it my guy for chang li is already up I, I i sincerely feel that she's she's not a main dps category because in prywin's own words a main dps wants to be on field for 14 to 15 seconds if you do this with chang li the damage drops off by quite a bit because her basic attack animations is really slow so the most optimal way of playing Chang Li is weaving in and out when she has a skill up. When you have the two sets of skill, that's when you can charge your inflamement a lot quicker instead of relying on your basic attack animations. So by this definition, if we were to classify Chang Li as a main DPS, you will notice that the damage output will, will, will fall off quite substantially because there's quite a bit of downtime. Which is why if you pair up with the likes of like Encore, it, it, it kind of covers both of their downtimes. And this leads to a pretty interesting topic. They are DPS, but I wouldn't say they are like main DPS because they are not the main character. They are not where your entire team is there to focus and funnel all of your buffs into the main character. You get what I'm saying? It's kind of like the follow-up team in, in Hongi Starbucks, right? Dr. Rachel and Topes. So like, if you were to pit both Hang Li with Encore, or Chang Li and have a rover, or Chang Li and Jingxi, you will find it a little bit difficult to differentiate who is truly the main DPS because they both have pretty high uptimes. It's not like this person is there for like 90% of the time and then you only use Ongo for like 10, 10 seconds. All right, sorry, one second, right? So I would say this main DPS role right now might need a little bit of a rework. So this is not entirely with Pride Wind, but it's just that with the introduction of Chang Li, this quote unquote dual DPS formation is starting to. to to pop off. I think this DPS category is fine. It's just that you do need to account for Chang Li's downtime and you need to supplement this with another unit. You can't really play her like how you play Qi Yan or even Jingxi where you just funnel all of your buffs. Like how you play them is basically you use your buffs, one second you switch back into them and then they're there for like 90% of the time, right? It, it, that's not really the optimal way to play Chang Li. And since this tier list is taking into account the most optimal Right here, right? It is the most optimal way to play them. There needs to be some kind of a rework. Maybe we need to see how things go from version 1.2 going forward. But that is going to be my personal thought. So with all that being said and done, I do want to say that Chang Li might not be the easiest to play. So if we want to take into the same consideration as Calcero, which is hard, I wouldn't necessarily say that Chang Li is, 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 is not hard because there are a lot of windows of opportunities where you want to swap cancel and slot in your DPS to kind of cover your downtime. Not as straightforward as, for example, like, like, like Jingxi and, and, and Jian. You do want to kind of master when do you want to swap back, swap back, instead of just blindly just, just, just going all in. Even if you know how to swap back, do you, do you guys know that sometimes when you press the skill, if you dodge too early, you don't even land your, your inflamed stacks. You actually need to follow through all the way. So there's a little bit of a heat drag that players will be comfortable with when you run Chang Li. So that you don't experience this this waste of skills or waste of damage right? with all due 
respect. Pang Lee's burst damage, or even like the time where she's up, is not insanely high. To be completely fair, it is also because Jing Shi just kind of warped how much damage it's going to be. Jing Shi's damage is just way too fucking high. So when you see she like 80,000 being dealt by a unit, you will say, oh my god, Jing Shi does like 300k. Why, why does this unit only do 80k? So it's not really like Chang Li that people are thinking, oh my god, Chang Li is so mid because she only does like 80k per ultimate and, and 40k, 50k per per end. It's just Jing Shi kind of kind of skewed this perception of damage output. Uh, before Jing Shi came out, when Heaven Rover did like a 80k ultimate, everyone, oh my god, 80,000 on Heaven Rover. This changes everything. But now because of Jing Shi, it, 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 it does warp the perception of, of damage numbers a little bit, right? Take that into consideration. I feel like she is around the same ballpark as Tian, but you, you just play her differently with Tian. Tian is a lot more straightforward. You give him buffs and you go all in. Done. Kang Li, you just need to play a little bit differently. Her damage output is there, but it's just that she's not as crazy as Jing Shi. So players are saying, oh my god, she's such a mid-ass unit, All right, So that is going to be that. Moving on to tier 1. I really, really, really wish I have Encore, but I'm, I finally do not have Encore. Since CBD, I have not played with Encore enough. So unfortunately, I can't say anything about Encore. From what I've heard, she's pretty good. From what I've seen from like even Sweetly, which does like an Encore solo clear, she is pretty good. I'm not gonna say anything, but it's just that uh, I wish I have her. Encore, Roar, insane. Uh, no comments. Maybe you guys in the comment section can kind of drop down in the comments. What are your thoughts about Encore, right? Have a Rover. I think at this point of time, have a Rover being at tier one is kind of fair. Not so much we said in the early game before Jingxi, I think her damage was absolutely insane, especially before with like liberation damage bonus and kind of stuff. So it is pretty good, but now it kind of got scaled a little bit. So I think that's pretty fair. Okay, tier 1.5. I I'm it's very, very unfortunate that Kauchero got bumped down all the way to tier 1.5. Very, very unfortunate. And Dan Jing also got bumped all the way down to tier 1.5. I would say this is also an as to dancing, right? So maybe her sequences does change everything. Maybe her sequence does change everything. So I'm gonna give you that. It just feels bad that these units, what used to be great, are now all the way in tier 1.5. Calchero is the Arlen of this game. That feels kind of bad. I just wanna let this sink in for a little bit. I feel like the intro of Jingxi, it really ruined a lot of the overall landscape in the DPS category. Like this. This little, this little, this little dragon. I feel like it's a little bit too early to introduce a character of, of this caliber into Warring Waves. It, it kind of bumped everyone down by like so, 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 so much. She, she's definitely good, right? but it, it, it kind of ruined the landscape. And, and it's only patch 1.1, guys. So like, I can, I, I cannot imagine what is the, the state of the DPS going to be by the time 2.0 rolls around. Can you imagine by the time 2.0, what is going to be Watering Waves anniversary unit let's be real 2.0 anniversary unit is gonna be crazy right if they were to introduce a 2.0 dps that power creeps jing shi i have no fucking idea what's gonna happen to the rest of the units here one can only imagine one can only imagine so that is just gonna be my, be my thoughts it is i feel like it's a little bit fast but okay yeah moving forward ling yang this is about a going on tier 3 i don't give a damn sure xia Frankly speaking, I think she has been a little bit um she, she has been a little bit undervalued. I, I think she honestly has very, very high damage output. Her ultimate is one of, if not the highest multiplier in the entire game. I would personally bound to tier 1 with 5. I've seen some crazy shit done with Shisha, especially the fact that you can pair Shisha quite well with Chang Li. Right? So I'll personally bump it up to tier 1 with 5 and then just drop this bitch all the way down to this. For this tier, um, uh, it is what it is, right? Then nobody in tier, in tier two, this guy just needs to go with the fat on. It is what it is. Rexalan has made a pretty interesting video where he did a S5 Ling Yang and he does like no damage. So it's something else, it's something else. So, uh, that's going to be that. And overall, let's kind of wrap up this tier list a little bit. Support, I'm G. Very nice, her. Hybrid, I'm G for the most part. Nothing too crazy. DPS, We interrupt this special program by the world's rank one Warren Waves player. Hong Li, neutrally speaking, tier one. And here is why. Yo. Everyone's confused about Chang Li. She's tier one. She performs on par with Encore and multiple other tier one DPSs. Havoc Rover is carrying her. Jin Shi is carrying her. Encore is carrying her. Yin Lin is carrying her. Whoever the second DPS is carrying her, she's tier one. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Insane. All right, so yeah, uh, that is basically, um, you know, that, yo, I'm neutral, right? I'm neutral.
Um, anyways, yeah, let me know what you guys do in the comments below. Uh, Chongli tier one. Uh, that's better. Uh, let's move on. Uh, Encore. I, I think the rest of the stuff is, is just kind of it is what it is. Uh, the overall ranking. I feel like the DPS is just it's just looking a little bit crazy. Like for Kalcher to go all the way in tier one with five within like one patch, it's kind of crazy. Because of Jingxi, this bitch broke the fucking DPS. She broke the power balance in Warring Base. And I think it's a little bit too fast. Nothing too crazy with the rest of the unit. It's just this bitch broke the power, power skill, right? So it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you agree or disagree, feel free to leave them down below. Yes, we're to engage in further discussion. Join the Discord at discord.gg forces. Pokey is really a very ethical community. Talk about Warring Base on a daily basis. Join the stream. Please talk to you for us. It's And you do talk about Warring Base. And I'll be streaming every day. Show below Discord. So that's all for today. All the best for your Changli Poos. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay.